Video starts here. The moment of truth. The Jordan oh, Cody right. guy. KTM 2018 not running, but we possibly found the problem. Yeah. Oh. It has to do with this because it definitely extended the runtime. You know what we need? I bet you anything. This battery is fried. And for whatever reason, if it's acting as a capacitor or whatever it is, when that battery gets to a certain, even when it's on a jumper like this, it's it's doing something. And I bet you that battery is the culprit. Let's get a new battery in there and test her out. This is the stock battery that came with it. Well, they were trying to do everything they could to save weight. In fact, on the next model year, on 2019s, they don't even give you rim locks. What? Look at right here. Where's that? Where's the hole? Right oh, there. Oh, yeah. What's up with that, KDM? It's the, like 300 bucks extra. And then, of course, if you don't want to split the cases yourself and you want to maintain your warranty, you have to pay KTM to do it. I mean, this is good old-fashioned chintzing. Oh, by the way, in the comments below, you should uh, tell Jordan to sell me this bike. Yeah. There we go. Oh my gosh, that's so much cinema. I'm trying to undo the lock, the, the trigger that stole this thing, backed out the lock, so I can't fucking open the seat on this thing. Oh, oh. check this out. Come. Oh, you have so much cinema behind you right now. It's come, insane. Come. Look at the negative terminal on this battery. What the hell is that? It's zip tied? It's zip tied. That's ridiculous. That was easy. Might actually even fit in there. Oh, it's a toy, like a toy guy. Oh, that's a nice spark in there. You guys, keep your volume down out there. I'm about to start my motorcycle. <laughs> All right. The moment of truthiness. Are you filming? suggested the TPS but I don't see how the TPS would have anything to do with this at idle. The tip over? No, the, uh, the, 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 the throttle position sensor. Alright, last one. I think that concludes this video. Maybe next time. If you guys have any ideas as to why Jordan's bike doesn't want to continue running, leave them in the comments down below. Oh, you want to go through real quick what uh, all the things that have been done. Should we start out like what happened? Like when, yeah, what yeah. I was doing yeah. when this happened? I was going to go ride down the way way over there. I hopped on the bike, started it up like normal. I hadn't washed it or anything. It was still dirty from the last time I rode it. And I rode it down the road and I was doing a wheelie up the little highway incline thing and it fucking died on me. Freaking sorry. Luckily, like it, it could have honestly hurt me really badly. And I hit the rear brake and I came down and then I like cycled the kill switch while I was still moving after dropping that wheelie and it started back up, got me off the highway into the grass and I tried to start it again. It started briefly and it stopped. I gave it a break. I was going to meet some people and I was like, I can't ride this bike down here. It started back up again and it was able to rev, so I said I'm going to quickly ride it back home and I rode it as, as fast as I could back home and it died on me about a block and a half down. So it wouldn't restart, wouldn't do anything. It turned out it blew a number one fuse and I had to push it home. So I pushed it home uphill both ways in the snow and I came back and... Wait, in the snow? Yeah. Jordan, this has got to be a true story. 
Okay, I I put I pushed it home uphill to there to my street and then downhill to my house and let it sit overnight because I don't have time for this shit and I still don't have time for this <laughs> stuff. And so when I was finally ready to work on it, I washed it completely, tried to because I want to work on a clean surface. And I dove in under here and I took the battery out and I went into here and I took this off and I pulled this guy out right here, which is the fuse block. And I pulled that out and I pulled that out there. Fuse number one right there was blown. That spare and that spare, both, I put in there. I didn't touch anything else and I got it to start and it popped the fuse immediately. And so I put the other spare in and it did not pop the second spare. So I thought to myself, I had a cracked tail light, which is right here. This thing was broken from various shenanigans and I, I kind of figured that maybe there was some sort of a grounding or a water issue. So I completely disconnected this. In fact, the other lead wouldn't come out without disconnecting the whole subframe. And I have a new one over there on my toolbox. So I just yanked it out and that lead is here. So as you can see, it is not contacting anything. So I made sure that was not contacting anything, not shorting anything out. And then I even disconnected the whole headlight assembly because that too is cracked and broken because apparently I ride like shit into trees. <laughs> and so that is completely disconnected, should not affect any running member of this bike. And once I disconnected these, it stopped blowing fuses. So that tells me that this was an issue that was blowing fuses, but that now when I, when I finally got it to start again, it would only run for like 10 seconds and then it would shut down. So I, I started taking apart the back end of the bike and this is the negative lead from the battery and that is where it comes, that is where it is supposed to be, that is from the factory where it is now and it actually bolts into the subframe here. So this negative lead actually grounds into this which is housed in plastic but it contacts this section of aluminum subframe there which is supposed to ground to the rest of the frame. So because I took this out, I regrounded it to this guy right here, which is still contacting the same piece of aluminum, but it's threaded only into plastic. And that was my mistake originally. I threaded that guy in. I assumed it was making good ground contact and there was no difference. I even cleaned that up a little bit. And that's when I involved you and there was zero power coming from the ignition whatsoever at all. It was completely dead. I checked all the fuses, everything was still intact. I checked uh, voltage from the battery through the starter. Everything was still intact and, and perfectly uh, no resistance. Everything was good. Um, and that's when I was kind of wigging out and I took that off and I put it here, right there where you see that little O. And I pressed it down with my socket head and I turned the ignition and everything came back on like it was and I thought everything was good until I started it just like that and it did the exact same thing. It started, it ran good for a second after the fuel pump primed and it died. So I thought that there was a fuel pressure issue and instead of going to the hardware store to get the fittings proper, uh, proper fittings to check the fuel pressure coming from the fuel pump to the fuel line out here to the injector, I decided I already had purchased a fuel pump because the original problem I thought was a fuel pump. And so I went ahead yesterday and took the tank off, took the fuel pump out, which is a pain in the ass. And I replaced the actual <laughs> pump motor itself. I replaced the filter and the tubing that goes to and from, and I replaced those with proper um, seating hose clamps. Everything was fine. All the hose clamps were tight, put it back in, tested the fuel pump, plugged it in, ran it. Fuel pump was good. Fuel pump still does the exact same thing. It primes perfectly, it's nice and quiet. It's a brand new pump, primes, does everything fine. Start the button, button works, starts. Stupid freaking KTM, expensive bike, shouldn't do this, out of warranty, dumb bike, stupid bike. Runs for like anywhere between five and 25 seconds and then dies. 
And so Kalani started looking and I started looking, we all started looking and we cleaned all of these contacts with electrical contact cleaner. We spread them apart. We made sure that there was perfect electrical contact between the male and the female, the male and the female, perfectly contact, nice and tight contact. And yet still here we are. So we thought maybe that stupid lithium battery that KTM supplied me with, which is right here. And now after multiple sessions is testing at number one, which is not good, not good at all. Won't start the bike by itself. So then I said to myself, self, let's put a good battery in there. One we know is good. And the only battery that I knew was good in this garage, frick beep beep, <laughs> was out of this Grom, which was stolen and gone for a year and returned back to me at two o'clock in the morning by the Maui Police Department. And I took that good battery out and I put it in there and we thought all was well again. And guess what happened again? It ran for 12 seconds, then like seven seconds, and then like five seconds. Oh my God, why does this brand new $11,000 dirt bike cause me so much agony and pain? Why is this happening to me? Why? Uh.